founders or from Plan Club. And it, this club is, gonna, is starting here today. So this is the first time. So, we are going to do this every Thursday in February, March, April, and in, this, and in the fall from September to November. So this is uh, going to be the new political forum for DIVA. It's connected to films. <coughs> we have established a group of 25 people from different um, organizations, political research organizations and humanitarian aid organizations in Norway and 10 very prominent persons from Norway. And this forum is always going to be in English and always having international guests. The topics are always outside Norway. So, and, uh, and uh, the topic is just very typical the con from the conflict zones and from misuse of power and also governmental power around. That could be also the United States. It's all, not only on the, in the third world. The topic today is Ethiopia. Next week is Sudan. Then follows Afghanistan. A topic on both refugees, child soldiering, and Iran. A practical thing, please turn off your mobile phones in here. I know the Ethiopians are already using mobile phones a lot, but <laughs> please respect the panel. Um, and we are going to film this uh, all, all Frontline Club, so you're not allowed to film this. This will be on the website frontlineclub.no. And in today's panel, Marius von der Feer from uh, New Frontier, he will be the moderator. And it's, it's, I think it's very interesting that today with a guest, Abdullahi Hussein, which is, was actually an advisor for the president that you have smuggled out, I mean, sacred material. It's very interesting to get that out and see what that is, that kind of misuse of power, which is about arrest, torture, murder, extortion, and rape. So this is about a president dictatorship using this to hurt the opposition. And I think, Marius, and you should just come up and you're going to present the, the panel. So please just enter. Okay. You want to say something yeah, first? Okay. Yeah. Go. Thanks. Now we'll start off with the uh, presentations from uh, all of them. Uh, my name is Marius von der Feer. I'm the organizer of uh, New Frontiers and will moderate, as Truth uh, says. It's about outside Norway, but it's also very much about inside Norway. And I'm very happy to see a lot of Ethiopians today and a lot of Norwegians in the same place. Uh, New Frontiers is a series of uh, public meetings based on the old idea of the Open Academy, which is an egalitarian uh, discussion in an open setting. So New Frontiers, uh, in New Frontiers there is a focus on the generic aspect of a meeting between people, the potentialities of the encounter itself, ways to link the conversation to already existing practices, and the generation of new actions and ideas. We also have to thank Frontline Club for being able to be here today and uh, Norsk Kulturfond and Fritur that uh, uh, sponsors New Frontiers. Uh, we're very happy and we're thrilled to have Abdullahi Hussain here, who is, uh, was the president's advisor in Ogaden province in Ethiopia and the head of the TV channel Chakira News. Uh, you already introduced a bit of it, but now from exile in Sweden, he is taking the material to the International Criminal Court in Hague. Uh, and part of the material that he is going to show today is going to be uh, uh, shown in NRK, but I was not able to get the time yet, so follow NRK there. We will, we will publish it on the website when it will be shown. And it is following him and uh, the Swedish journalist Pearson and Shivi that was in prison in uh, Ethiopia for 15 months. Ubang Meto is the other one from Ethiopia. He's a human uh, acti rights activist who has been tirelessly advocated for human rights, justice, freedom and environment, enhanced accountability in politics and peace in Africa for over 10 years. He has briefed leaders and official, uh, officials at United Nations, the European Parliament, the US Department of State, the US Senate, the US House of Representatives, the World Bank, 
and the Council of Foreign Relations, among many others. He is currently the leader of Solidarity Movement for a New Ethiopia, working from also exile in Canada. Uh, the third person out is Johan Helland. He is a social anthropologist uh, with extensive experience from developmental, developmental research, consultancy and administrative work in Eastern and Northern Eastern Africa. Helland's professional profile and research interests include work with pastoral societies and dry land development, rural development, poverty, institutional analysis, research policy, and research cooperation and developmental assistance. Helland has also been the team leader on consultancy teams with international participation and is now working at the Christian Mikkelsen's Institute in Bergen, which has the cooperation of academic exchange with the University of Addis Abeba. And last uh, but least, not least is Solveig Sivarsson. She is a Norwegian artist and activist currently working on a documentary about the readmission agreement of asylum seekers with denial between Norway and the security police of Ethiopia. So we'll start off uh, with presentation by Abdullah Hussain. Thank you. Uh, well, um, my name is Abdullah Hussain. Uh, I would like to thank Marios and Solfi uh, inviting me to this uh, meeting today so that I can uh, share my experience with you. Um, I, came, uh, I came out of the country in 2012 and I have been since then in Sweden. Uh, I was working uh, with the regime in Ethiopia for three years the administration they have in Ogaden. Uh, I was the advisor of the president in Ogaden toward this youth development. Uh, at the same time, I was the head of the media in that region. Uh, and at the same time, I was the uh, chairman of Somali Regional Youth Federation and member of the uh, Ethiopian National Youth Federation Executive Committee and, found, and one of the founders. Uh, before I joined this regime in Ethiopia, I was uh, a businessman. Um, and uh, this, the current president of Ogaden uh, was my childhood friend. So uh, I was based, my, my last couple of years, I was working in Addis Ababa doing different uh, business works. Uh, and he used to come to Addis Ababa uh, for different governmental conferences where we used to meet and hang out and just meet as a friend uh, most of the time. So he started encouraging me to join the regime in Nogaden. <clears throat> uh, I knew that uh, from the previous regimes in Ethiopia that there was a lot of uh, problems in Nogaden. So he was uh, using that to push me to work with them. And finally, uh, late 2008, I decided to join him and I went back to the capital city of Ogaden, Jijiga, or Somali regional state, where I started uh, mobilizing the youth of Somali regional state, or Ogaden. Uh, so, uh, during my first two, three months, when I got the chance to travel deep in Ogaden, from village to village, I, I realized that there was crimes against the humanity, there was uh, human rights violations that were taking place in Ogaden. So I was really shocked, uh, and I, I went back to the capital city of uh, Ogaden, which is Jijiga, to meet the current president. Uh, and during that time, he was the head of the Regional Security and Justice Bureau. I met him uh, since he was the person that encouraged me to join them. And since what he used to tell me was that the government was doing good things for the people and for the uh, country. So I told him uh, what I have seen. I told him a lot of things that I have seen in those villages I was visiting. But unfortunately, his reaction was uh, telling that he was aware of what was going on, what was happening. And in fact, he was one of the people behind those kind of crimes against the humanity. Uh, after that, I decided to quit the job I had with them and go back to my normal life and business. Uh, but unfortunately, in Ethiopia uh, or in that specifically in the administration of Ogaden, if once you join uh, and once you start working with them, it's very difficult and very hard to stop working with them because they will come after the person asking different questions and the person might end up in prison. 
the problem is they will immediately uh, got the feeling that if the person have became against what they are doing. Uh, and that's, that's really impossible. That was impossible for me during that time. But instead, I had another idea, uh, and that was collecting uh, evidences going out of the country and showing, uh, uh, showing that evidence, sharing with the international community. So uh, that was uh, uh, why I changed side, uh, because I couldn't watch uh, all those crimes against the humanity that was taking place. I couldn't stand it uh, when a military man is raping teenage girls, uh, when they are torturing innocent people uh, to death, uh, where they have killed and murdered a lot of people. Uh, where there are hidden genocides that took place and that is happening, uh, maybe as we speak now, because the last genocide that took place in Ogaden was only before three months. So there was all these crimes against humanity and I couldn't stand it and that was why I changed your side. Uh, then I was collecting video evidences, not just uh, written documents but video evidences. Uh, and. I was collecting these video evidences for, the, for three years, starting from 2009 and 2012, when I uh, last left. So today I have some of these uh, videos, which is around 100 hours, uh, the videos I have in my hand. Uh, we made a documentary out of these videos, a documentary that uh, is around one hour, 58 minutes, uh, which is around one hour, that was sent on the Swedish national television. And I hope that will be also on Norwegian TV because I know that they have taken the film. Uh, but today here I have uh, four or five different short clips to show you that uh, at least some of the videos so that you can see what's happening and you can see the situation for your own. So let me um, start with this video which is uh, about the main prison in Ogaden state which is known as uh, Jail Ogaden. Uh, in this prison, the prison is really very small. It's around 500 kilometers, uh, or maybe 600 kilometers, but there are around 20,000 prisoners in that prison. And you can imagine how tight the situation is in that prison. But let's just take a look at this video and then I will explain. Och en av de många filmer som Abdullah kopierar syns den här. Men syftet med mötet är inte vad deltagarna tror. Allt spelas in för att president Omar ska kunna se banden och identifiera säkerhetsrisker. Vem pratar för mycket och vem kan hålla tyst? The, the way I managed to get the videos was when it was with the president, then I have the chance to copy everything on my laptop and later on put it on a hard drive and hide it somewhere. Uh, these prisoners are uh, innocent people of uh, the Ogaden region. They just arrest anyone they want to uh, take money from. Uh, maybe they have some other reason. Uh, and sometimes what they do is they just open the gate of the prison and they arrest every visitor. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is one of the videos that I have uh, with me. Uh, the reason this, this meeting was going on for one week uh, and they were filming uh, the whole thing. Uh, the reason behind the filming this meeting was that the president and uh, the other guys that are working with him, they are afraid that someday there might be uh, some uh, human human rights organizations or other committees to investigate the crimes that has happened in Ogaden. 
So this time uh, they were trying to see uh, among the police which one may talk if there is a pressure on them or and which one may hide the situation in the prison. So we have the vice president, the current vice president, and all the, and also the chairman of the political party that's running that state in this meeting, and he's the one who is leading this meeting. So they are putting pressure on the police so that they can talk, and only to see who will talk and who will not talk and be capable of hiding what's going on. Uh, so as you can see, they, the police of that state, the police of the government of Ethiopia, is talking about how they are torturing people. They are talking about how many people they have killed because of the torture. And if, uh, in these videos, they are also discussing that they have two different groups which are uh, known as torture group. This torture group is torturing the new prisoners and the old prisoners that are in that, that are in that prison. And because of this torture, they have killed a lot of people. So in this video, they are mentioning the number of the dead people and also they are mentioning the names the names of the dead people so it's very clear that uh, in this prison they are torturing people and they have killed a lot of people and they are currently killing people in this prison as you have seen they are uh, talking about different numbers they say in six were dead during this day and during this day there was five people dead and during this day there were 13 and that goes on and on and on for a week. So anyone can imagine how many people have died until now. And it's not something that has stopped, it's something that's going on as we speak now. I will uh, show you another short video of uh, this same prison where they are discussing about the situation of the ladies, of the women in that prison. Mahabisti Saka legacy day haps the day to let the Danka Somalia here, Wahi the Manto Katar Sanai and Urki on a left, Hatava of Bokoli and Lavadan, Mahabos Aya Waha, see the into the Nitimit Katimaki, who have to suffer the Medakuina had to let the Danka Somalia more than I have the Mohammed Umar. Wale, Wahalo, see the Aim Hakishiski, Allah Gai, Uruka Mahatana, Urukolov, Gabsar Hadim O Governor, Makasa Swain. مرکا حاوین تصفیه دل هنر و حاوین دی قانکی دل دی قاطی اها هیچیس که لگش اینا کسب به هم میشن سب. تیم رپورتاجش تصریح داد هند لام رезультات داد ویت فرد سامتال. من این لیت عبدالله حسین هر اون فلست داد اون فریجی نفونگانه این تی آلس گریلا سولداتر. و آوانس یوت سمگل دی ویدیو فیلم در فرامگور ات فونگانه فوت بتالا فر از لپاس فریجی. معروفی لعفی نیو Värst är situationen för kvinnorna. De betalar inte bara pengar för att släppas fria. De får betala med sina kroppar. Vad är det? 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 Uh, these women are the ones that are getting raped every day in the prison. Uh, some of them are pregnant, some of them have children. Uh, and from the files, you can see some of the police saying that some of these children belong to the commissioner, Mr. Abdibadi. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, uh, of course, not only for the men, but also for the women uh, in that prison, there is the torture and the killing and all that is going on. But when it comes to the women uh, prisoners in that prison, uh, the difficult thing, uh, the horrible situation is that they have, uh, they have a special room in that prison, which is well decorated, and they are using uh, that room only for raping the girls in the prison, only the teenage girls. 
and the good looking girl is in that prison and it is the police of the state that is raping these girls uh, but not only the police but also the officials that's raping these girls from the files we can see that some of the policemen here talking about the commissioner uh, and the commissioner is the head of the prisoners in that state uh, so we can see that they are saying there are children in the prison and some of these children belongs to the commissioner of the prisoners in that state the man you have seen in the video so from this, uh, what we can see is that they have this special room, they are raping the girls in that prison, and in fact, there are pregnant girls that are in the prison, there are children in the prison, there are children uh, being born every day in that prison, and this is all because of the administration. Uh, uh, but the other uh, terrible situation is that still they are using these prisoners for political propaganda. What they are doing is that from the files you can see that uh, some of the police is saying anyone who is being released from this prison is because of negotiations. So they are collecting money from the prisoners and they are raping the girls and then they are releasing them uh, by gathering group uh, of around 100 or 200. So once they have 200 or maybe 300 prisoners to be released. The president is coming there with the, uh, with the uh, uh, cameraman and journalists standing in front of the prison and they are used, they, he is saying that he has pardoned around 200, 300 prisoners uh, because of they wanted to make peace and sometimes they use the uh, different festivals uh, in, in, in the region. Uh, and also, uh, when a prisoner is leaving the prison, they must stand in front of the camera and they must say that they support the government and uh, everything is okay and they were wrong and they were criminals. So this is the situation in the main prison of Ogaden. This is what's happening right now. It's not something that has happened before a year or two years. It's a current situation and it's what's going on right now as we speak. So this is just one of the videos uh, that I smuggle out. I also smuggle out a lot of other different videos. Uh, among them, I will uh, show you one video that uh, shows a hidden genocide that took place in one of the villages. Uh, there was a time I was traveling together with the president from village to village, and we met uh, the people of this village called Galalshe, uh, where there was a hidden genocide. Uh, and as some of you may know, uh, the problem in Ethiopia and the problem in, in, in that region is that the people are afraid of the government. So whenever there is a governmental meeting, whenever they are meeting someone from the government, all they have to say is that they support the government, they love the government, uh, and everything is good. But uh, during this time in this village, there was an old man who couldn't take it, who was speaking from his heart. So I will show you what that old man was saying. Every village we went, Everyone is afraid of the president and of the Minkwis and everyone was saying that they love the president and they have everything they need. Propagandas. So uh, there was two cameramen with us recording uh, everything, so uh, so that later on they can edit and put it on the uh, local TV they have. But there was this old man who couldn't uh, who couldn't take it, who couldn't just uh, keep quiet. It's more Aiga. Tomorrow we should be later. 
جيكيانو أفر إيه السجاشة إنه كوكوري أو كوريا إن تومبا مال دينج واتسو مرتين. So he was talking. He was talking to the president, and he was uh, telling him about what the new police is doing to the people. He told us about a hidden genocide that took place in his village, Malkukla. One of the drivers of the president was with the new police during that time. He was driving one of the new police vehicles and he was the one who told me. So what they did was they make they make up a line and they were uh, moving, killing everyone around that village. The reason they were killing uh, the civilian people of that village was uh, that saying, you knew about the rebels attacking us, so you were supposed to give us information, which means you, you were supposed to guard us, means that the civilian people should guard the Lee police. Uh, the, the killings were around 100 people during that day. After this uh, genocide, everyone has fled away to neighbor countries. Soon after the camera was off and after the meeting was done, he ordered the new police to arrest the old man and they arrested him. Uh, but after they arrested him, I don't know where they took him, but they took him in custody. Um, uh, the, the video was very long, but we will not have time to watch the whole video, so I took this as a sample. Uh, as you can see, this old man were supposed to say that uh, he loved the president uh, and he loved the government of Ethiopia, but instead he, uh, he couldn't stand it. He was talking from his heart. Uh, and because of this, he ended up uh, in the hand of the militias. I don't know if they have killed him or I don't know if they have uh, took him to prison, but he will have two options uh, as my understanding. They might kill him or they might took him to prison. If he goes to prison, he will go through the situation I was telling you about the prison in Ogaden. <clears throat> he will be tortured and uh, then he might die because of the torture. Um, so this is not the only massacre that has happened in Ogaden. This is only one of the around 65 villages in Ogaden. Uh, and it's happening all over, it's happening all around in that region. Uh, as I was telling you, the last massacre I know of is, uh, it was only uh, before uh, around three months, uh, where they have killed a lot of people. So the main reason uh, is systematically driving the people of Ogaden out of that region. We have hundreds of thousands of refugees all around. If you go to the Dab refugee in Kenya, you will meet thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have fled because of this kind of problems. And it's not only the Dab. You can, uh, we can, you can, you can name it. Uh, all, all, it's uh, the refugees are all around. Uh, so this is just one of uh, other video of the videos I'm talking to you about. Uh, I will. Uh, now go on. Uh, there was two Swedish journalists that tried to visit uh, Ogaden to report uh, this kind of situation and also to report about uh, the African oil uh, that has, that are uh, that is active in Ogaden. Uh, but unfortunately, they ended up in the hand of uh, the Ethiopian army and militias, uh, and they were held in the uh, jungle 
in the Ogaden desert for around a week uh, where they were tortured and at the end forced to say that uh, they are terrorists uh, and they were collaborating with terrorists uh, and that they believe that they have committed a crime that's uh, terrorism actions. That was uh, during 2011. Uh, so during the whole time they were filming everything they were doing. Uh, what they did was, it was very difficult for the militia to force the journalists to say that they are terrorists. Uh, but at the end, they took them in, in two different positions and they shot a fire in between them. And they told uh, each one of them that they have killed his friend and if he don't uh, call, collaborate, then they, he's next. Uh, and it was the current vice president and the head of the political party that's running uh, the Somali regional state right now that was directing this, this film, where they even brought uh, two witnesses from other village, trained them, trained them, trained them to be, uh, trained them to testify against the journalists acting as witnesses. And we have all that in a raw material, uh, a video that's unedited, and the video camera was on uh, during the whole time. So I will so I will show you now uh, one of very short uh, clip that can uh, show a little bit about that. Vice President Abdullah Bara lurar oss igen och säger upp i lastbilen och nu ska vi flyga iväg. Nu får ni flyga till sjukhus och. Nu är vi klara med det. Men eh, plötsligt då så, så stannar han bilarna. Vi sitter i varsin bil, jag och Johan. Och jag ser hur Johan leds iväg eh, ett håll med, med soldater bakom sig. Märker att jag bakom mig har fyra fem etiopiska soldater som höjer sina Kalashnikovs. Och han säger liksom åk, åk, åk. Och då ring, ringer det i huvudet liksom att är det här det tar slut liksom? Han tvingar mig att gå och säger att det här är din sista chans. Om du inte samarbetar nu så skjuter vi dig och skyller på rebellerna. Jag fortsätter gå. Jag hör soldaterna bakom mig mantlar, osäkrar. Och, eh, han säger stanna, jag stannar, jag vänder mig om. Eh, och soldaten höjer, höjer sitt, eh, sitt vapen och så skjuter han. Och när skottet går av så, så tänker jag liksom shit, shit han sköt. Han sköt. Så jag reflexmässigt rasar ner på sanden och, och försöker liksom... Är jag kropp? Är jag människa? Lever jag? Eh, och när jag inser att han sköt i busken bredvid mig eh, så kommer filmkameran upp. Eh, Abdullah Ibrahim ser till mig att resa mig och sen så tar ett nytt förhör vid. Så de var armade? Ja, de var armade. Så de var armade? Ja, de How the thing has happened? How the thing has happened? At the crash. Yeah, at the crash, yeah. There, somewhere, so... So, 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 Yeah. I have a seat properly. You're just just in your trouser here, in the dust. No one has punched you. You just put your legs with say. What yeah? Now I'm gonna have. Yeah. What should you say? I'm not going to dictate you. Just you you have to say the things. All the things you you can throw. Men här är jag rätt väck, liksom. Jag är jag är nog rätt feber här, liksom. Och då är det så här jag skott, liksom, som 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 bränner av, liksom, med hundra meter ifrån mig, liksom. Och då vet jag att du tänker, liksom, att nu sköter Martin, liksom. Eh, så tänker jag fråga, liksom, att did you shoot my friend? Did you shoot Martin? Så jag frågar, liksom. Skjut mig, jag tittar riktigt, liksom. Bara på sova, bara vi får sluta med jävla idiotin. Jag har kätt med mer film, kommer jag kätt med där eller mer, liksom. Eh, och jag tror att om man ser väl med efterhand så tror jag att det tur att jag var så groggig nog att, att jag slapp hanterade min frisk gärna liksom. Du tror att du är bra. Ja, det 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 är b
Sen han är klar så tar han ner kameran och är nöjd och skrattar och eh, liksom kramar om mig eh, och tycker liksom ja, duktigt. Du är väldigt duktig nu. Um, so, uh, well, you, you can see it. You can see it for your own. Uh, one thing I want to say about this is that uh, uh, we know that there is anti-terrorism uh, anti law in Ethiopia, uh, and which has been used against these two journalists. Uh, I will tell you something very important about the videos uh, I smuggle out. Uh, we have the police of the state saying that uh, they have released the members of Al-Shabaab group, members of the terrorists that are linked to Al-Qaeda in Somalia, that they have released the members of this terrorism uh, group because they have money and they have paid. Uh, and on the other hand, we have the same Ethiopian army and militias forcing these two European journalists into uh, terrorism and, and, co uh, and later on getting them sentenced to 11 years because of uh, terrorism. So that is uh, how Ethiopia uh, works toward this fighting against the terrorism. They are releasing the, the real terrorism and they are arresting the civilian people saying that this civilian pe these people are uh, terrorists. Um, I think I am running out of time. My friend here was showing me that I have only a few minutes left. Uh, I will show you one very short video about how the regime in Ethiopia is creating propagandas. Uh, we were in this village together with the president and there was a water pump that was closed for a long time. Uh, and the, the people of that village doesn't have access to clean water to drink. We were there, uh, he was supposed to help the people with clean water to drink, but instead uh, he was using these innocent people uh, for propaganda. So what he did was he brought uh, a mechanic, an engineer, and then they opened up uh, the water machine and they ran the water for uh, a day. And then they wanted to film the people of that village getting water uh, from that water pump so that Later on, it can be published on the local TV. Uh, but suddenly, there is a girl, just like the old man, who couldn't take this whole propaganda. So I will show you the, the, my last short video, and then uh, I will make my conclusion. Excuse me, just so that uh, I must explain about this intro of this short video. Uh, this was the president, uh, and this was a meeting with the uh, regional youth where I am sitting next to him. Uh, as you saw, uh, he was talking about uh, a floor that was in Njijiga, and he is saying that he has saved 240 people uh, all alone. Uh, by <laughs> So <laughs> this is the kind of leaders we have. Uh, I'm sorry, I just have to, I just have to explain that. <laughs> to collect evidences so that I can share it with the international community and show the world what's happening in the Ogaden. So that was the reason I changed side. Eftersom Abdullahi hade president Omars förtroende fick han många tillfällen att samla material. 
Presidenten gjorde ständiga resor runt om i delstaten för att spela in propagandafilmer. What the president is doing is he wants to show that he is providing the people with clean water to drink. When we was in Galalche or Malakka village, they opened up this water pump, which was closed for a long time. The, they want the people getting the water in the camera so that they can use it later on for the program. Everyone was saying, oh, thank you, you gave us this water and we have this water and we love the government and all this. But there was this lady uh, who, who was talking about the reality behind this water drama and she said soon after you leave now this water will be cut off he was trying to force her to say uh, thank you we we thank the government and she denies to say that and finally, he went to accuse her for being rebel supporter. At the beginning, she's not afraid. Maybe she's not aware of what they could do to her. Or maybe the whole thing looks so funny, so she just couldn't uh, keep quiet. And after the camera, they arrested her, but I don't know what they did. Maybe they took her to Jello Garden, or I don't know, but what I know is they arrested her. So, um... Uh, one of the other thing in this video is that we have this uh, this sh short man in this uh, scene that's uh, saying that uh, this is the president, this is your president. He brought uh, medicine and the water yesterday. Uh, so that means that he is uh, testifying that there was no access to clean water and there was also no access to medicine. Uh, and at the same time, the president took this because he wanted to film uh, when the people are getting access to medicine and clean water to drink. Uh, and, and so this shows how the regime in Ethiopia is creating propagandas. Uh, and I would like to say that the regime in Ethiopia is perfect when it comes on two things. The first thing is hiding the real situation on the ground in the country. Uh, uh, because they have banned the media, uh, they, they, uh, international journalists are not welcome, uh, human rights organizations are not welcome, and any independent person is not welcome in Ethiopia. Uh, so because of this, it became very difficult to see the current situation uh, and what's happening. But the second thing which is very important, which they are really, really perfect on, is convincing people. For example, if you take me as an example, I was living in the capital city of Ethiopia when the president came, uh, approached me and encouraged me and to the extent convinced me to join them and work with them. So you can understand how, uh, uh, how smart they are when it comes to convincing the Western countries and people from outside Ethiopia. But this is the reality. And this was a good chance uh, for getting out this kind of evidences so that those people who were co who were being convinced, uh, who were being cheated by the Ethiopian leaders could see what's happening and what the uh, real situation in Ethiopia is. Uh, now, being in Norway, I would like to say that uh, the government of Norway, uh, of course, has signed an, some kind of agreement with the intelligence of Ethiopia. So I want to say that 
uh, the intelligence of Ethiopia is the one is that are committing this kind of crimes against humanity. We have video evidences. It's not just that as if I am just against the government or something else. But we have video evidences, and video evidences don't lie. Anyone can take a look, anyone can watch, and anyone can give the, their comments. Uh, so, Norwegian government has signed some kind of agreement with the intelligence uh, security of Ethiopia, which is the same people that are raping teenage girls, same people that are torturing innocent people, same people that are killing and have murdered a lot of people in a lot of different places and in a lot of different times. Same people that are committing hidden genocides. Uh, so I would, I would really like the people of Norway to see that and to understand the kind of agreement their government have uh, with this kind of regime in Ethiopia. Uh, thank you very much. I would be open for all questions. Just and we are saying, Mr. Awi, on a meeting, I can't run up. But if you call us, na, if you call us, yeah, how no, we can't president and down. If you call us, political party, so they buy me ballo. We can't remember. Is that some of us can remember? And now that some of us, the survey just so we get the number on a torture, yeah, the number on a set of theater for the number and down. The survey just, yeah, on a kefil and down. Like yet, yeah, like kefil. But I'm decorated like a kefil and down. Now that kefil just. Polis itu cuma saya orang balas itu orang itu dia kebun saya itu dia nak forum dohana. Dia biasa ini video. Negeri he, ini mufat orang negara ini. Mau lelah sosial belum betul mufat orang negara saya orang. Ia kini bukan polis itu rasa cuma perasa cuma anda betul dia minat negara itu negara. Allah sama dia tak kahir sesuatu sama apa. Indah kim kama apa itu malu. Negeri kim kim kama bihun noro. Ia kau mana komisioner. Orang yang kita fikir betul betul nanti mana orang nak perbuat. Komisioner itu yang kita bayangkan dia fikir bujuk sewa cuci dekat dia lah. Indah um dijauh cuci dia lah. Usir betul tu. Pula polis sewa cuci itu nak guru. Ia kes bersama kah Allah kau boleh lah. Komisioner itu kau komisioner nanti nasib tu. Ia kelimu presiden tu amma kari ni orang. Anggeri kezilai mana rada mana mana kita kena ambil balik negara ini dalam mana na. Yang rasa cawe orang ni lelai dia ini nak perancu. Presiden tu mana ni negara ini cila, mana ni negara ini cila ni melalui negara ni melalui yang lebih fergi. Lelau video yang biasa itu, galal share ini pada orang dahulu sejak kahir jenazah saya nak pernah. Selesai yang biasa itu, kalau presiden tu kah galal share ini pernah. Naya galal share sewa cikah sebab kahir ini. Kazaus anda semua agil, selesai tu fasa mohon agar sena agar orang biasa itu. Kazaus itu, hune tu ya suri cikah setengah itu minder resep baca, hune tu orang dah nak pernah. Menarik video tu serta apa cikah dah nak pernah. Naya endet arga orang negeri orang serta itu dah nak pernah. Naya biasa itu. Ya kini lumi ketul presiden tu nak pernah film ni yang memarau, fakih itu serau film. Lela awal hari kami balu orang dah hulet sewa cuci nama tu tau. Ia orang nak awal dana peruna, turun tu untuk tanya azu ader gawu nau. Mesti kerana tindis itu train tu satu aja. Lepas kerana mesti kerana dia orang tu nak guru aja film tu serut. Negeri kan? Kamera orang kuan, mat fat kamera orang kuan mat fatau mungkin lebih tu negeri lemas rata tu nalaru. The whole time camera on na bara, camera on hano na. Yara sa chong sa 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 ruyan na bara. Na sa video ust, na si ka kalila warda ya matu tinulet with na sochin. Sinagro a chow, inde ta argo interview masat in dalab a chow, min malat in dalab a chow, inde ta net information masat in dalab a chow. Ula sinagro a chow, video ust al. Enna si sa watch damo yeta na information sa sa tu video ust al. Na misali hayarat na bara, nulet a chong bichane karano. Asir na bara, ni na bara niyalo yeta na information sa sa tu yasa yel na. Eh, hulu yang biasa ya, kelulus tu yang lalu liu polis na, ya kelulu asal ada, mini ada lagi yang dohana yang biasa. Bata kala yang lalu ni tak, eh, no zarem selesai good day na, uzi sebab sebab uzi yang asal ni na baru, ya semua na uzi oslo yang mat out, skaun katelai yu ya ya kanorway parlama bala tiga tiga na internet, na bata kala yang lalu baru ini, sebab tam turu lekzo turu na kerana na uzi itu kaya yang baru. بطرو هنا ثاني تلوثه. السودان أست ب Swedish War Crimes Commission كس جمرانال يجي وتا وتم فيديو تبى مروزا أست أسرك بياتشوالو. يعني إن كس تكابلوت فايلون تكابلوت إنفستيجيت لما أركولو وسانة سلا الفالنا إنفستيجيت يتركنو. يا بتعم تلقنا كرناو. ليلا دمو ICC درس لما هيد بزوس راوتشن يسرن. 
ኢትዮጵያ እንግዲህ የአይሲሲ አግሪመንት ፈራሚ አይደለም ነገር ግን አሰን ኢንዲቪጁዋል መሄድ ይችላል ኦጋዴን ውስጥ ክራይም የፈጸሙ ሰዎች ፕሬዝዳንቱን አካቶ ምክትሉን ጨምሮ ሌሎች ሰዎች አሉ እነዛ ክራይም ሳገነስቱ ማለትን የፈጸሙ ሰዎች ማለት ነው እነሱን እና ሌሎች እነሱን ሲተባበሩ የነበሩትን ሰዎች በተለያየ ሁኔታ እየከሰስናቸው ነው ያለነው ጥረትም ያደረግ እንዳለ ነው አይሲሲ ድረስ ለማስገባት ብዙ ስራዎችንም በዚህ ሁኔታ እየሰራ ነው የኢንተርናሽናል ኮሚኒቲ ሪአክሽን ስዊደን ውስጥ ትልቅ ነበር በጣም ደስ የሚል ጥሩ ነገር ነበር ኖርዌይ አሁን ነው የጀመርነው ገና አሁን በዚህ ስብሰባ ውስጥ ነው እንዳያችሁት ስንናገር የነበረው ነገር ግን ደስ የሚለው ነገር ምንድነው በኖርዌይ ቲቪ ተወስዷል ኖርዌጂያን ቲቪዎች ኤንአርኬ ነው የሚባለው ወስደውታል ምናልባት በቅርብ ጊዜ ሊሆን ይችላል ወይ ሊቆይ ይችላል በተመሳሳይ ሁኔታ ደግሞ ዴንማርኮች ደግሞ ወስደውታል የኛን ፊልም ዶክመንተሪ ፊልሙን እንዳውም ዴንማርክ ውስጥ ዲአር ሚባል ኢንተርናሽናል ዲስትሪቢዩተር እንትን ያላቸው ካምፓኒ አለ እነሱ ወስደውታል በአለም አቀፍ ዲስትሪቢዩት ላይ አድርጉት ማለት ነው እና እስከ አሁን በሱዳን ውስጥ ነው የተላለፈው እዛ ውስጥም የነበረው ሪአክሽን በጣም ጥሩ ነው I think Norway needs a deeper political debate with real reflections connected to films and the documentary films that bring us down to these areas of conflict zones and we need people coming from there from around from the third world from different conflict zones to come here and talk with us we have a lot of good researchers in Norway that can be connected to the people involved in conflicts so frontline club Oslo is actually a, a daughter or a kind of associate with the frontline club in London who has been doing this for the last 10 years so now it was time to start this in Norway i think we will do this every thursday in the cinematheque in oslo and continue with a lot of different topics on afghanistan on refugees and both refugees and iran there's a lot of conflict zones where we know has to know more as norwegians The newspapers of Norway is very superficial in some ways. They're talking and the article doesn't go into the deep conflicts. So I mean we have a lot of people well educated like uh, in, in philosophy and other things so the topics always has to be twisted a little. And that's what we are going to do here. And in Le Monde Diplomatique here in Norway is behind the whole frontline club. So I think we have a kind of resource network and 25 intellectuals is going to support us now. So we are very eager to start this and see how we can continue. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. I think that today uh, uh, debate is excellent. Uh, I think the, the reason being, most of the time people don't know uh, about what's going on in Ethiopia. The Norwegian policymakers they know, but the, the Norwegian citizens they don't know. And so I think one of the things that which is I lack about today is even having someone who is really representing the government side in a way, as you can tell from the the, uh, the other gentleman, is really speaking and kind of saying the Ethiopian government is good and he's saying the stability and what really I like was to tell them that stability by what cost because now we can say that Ethiopia is you know stable but it's stable when things are bubbling it's just a matter of time it will explode and when it explode we will be dealing with it so is it good to deal with it when it's already out of control it is good to deal with it now so I think the debate was very good and the second thing is also to let them know that Ethiopian who are years if they go back home they will be risky of having a problem to their family so I think this kind of dialogue is good all the way I tell people that there's two things uh, we only they do their homework and convincing some of the Western even to think like a TPLF but we fail to do that. So when you go now, some of the things, as you can tell, even like the gentleman, that they, something you find most of the time from the Western people, they go to the point where they say that opposition people are poor Murdergi and Amara, you know, Neptanya, even some of them white people, they know Neptanya Kal Rasu. And now, but we never do our homework to go and get the other side of the message. So I think having this kind of uh, platform inviting someone like him to come and join us is, is crucial because we want to confront him and say look they know the truth 
they know the truth because what's happening now with most of the Western countries, they say that Ethiopia is fighting on war on terror while the Ethiopian government is terrorizing their own people. And the second thing too is they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to disappoint the TPLF. But as I said it before and all the way repeated, it is the Ethiopian that who will free themselves. We are not asking the white people of the Western to free us, but we are asking them that, you know, to put pressure not to pretend like there's no problem. We know in Ethiopia it is an ethnic apartheid. MPDs continue like this. It's going to be explored. Most of the Westerns say there's no viable alternative. You cannot build home in a desert where there's no tree, there's no material. In Ethiopia, the government cannot allow opposition to work. The government cannot allow freedom, free press. The government cannot allow civil society. That makes it impossible. But the Western and the donor who gave $3 billion to Ethiopia have the role to do that. And I think this is the dialogue I wish can be duplicated in other European countries as well. Thank you. My name is Maurice Honefer. I'm organizing events that is called New Frontiers. Because of the new situations in the world, we call it New Frontiers. Now, there's always new frontiers happening between people, between nations, and so on. And, and uh, this speci specific event, it, we had uh, seen the documentary of Abdullahi Hussein and the Swedish journalist on Swedish television. And uh, we know about Obang Meto for a long time. And we thought it would be a very interesting situation to make them meet because they represent different cultures, different uh, political ideas and everything. But we thought with them to meet with the Ethiopian uh, society in Oslo, it could be an interesting opportunity to bring people together. This is one thing. The other thing is uh, the Norwegian unique uh, return agreement with, uh, that they have made a contract with uh, the uh, NIS. Uh, we want to stop this. A lot of activists in Norway, a lot of Norwegians, a lot of Ethiopians, of course, want to stop this agreement. We don't think it's a, a, a correct thing to do to make a, make a contract with the same people as many people are afraid of and fleeing. So this is another part I think that we really were able to frame in a, in a good way today. And of course we want to start a discussion, not only Ethiopians, Ethiopians, we would like the Norwegian uh, civil society, but also the research, uh, you know, universities and so on, and also the different developmental projects, people working with this, there's a lot of contact Norway, Ethiopia, and we would like them to meet and discuss really what to do, how to do it, and, and so on, yes. This resource is myself, but I think this is a very good idea to get, and to do it in Norway is a very good idea, because Norway has a close relationship to Ethiopia, as well as they have actually done a lot of interesting things too. So there's a lot of interest with Ethiopia, but on this kind of developmental research level and so on. I think to do more meetings here with international uh, diaspora, but also with the human rights uh, organizations and so on, is a very good way forward. I think it could, but something you could, something you could use Norway for, because we really have the possibility to do it here.